Hello, this is Bad Vibes. Today's video is on those neighbors that are somewhat sketchy or just plain evil. I've had a few of those before, but nothing too serious. Please hit that like button if you enjoy and sit back and relax. Just moved into a new neighborhood and I'm starting to get really worried. My neighbor, who I don't know at all, comes outside every night in the dark and stares at my house with a creepy look. He doesn't move during the staring session and it typically lasts for 20 minutes to an hour. I have called the police about the situation, but they're not much help and I don't know how to handle this on my own. One time, I stared back at him and he just wouldn't budge. I went and knocked on his door one time and the house was eerie silent and there was no answer. When I returned to my porch, I turned around. He was just standing there in the window looking at me with that creepy stare. I have been here for a few months and he doesn't miss a single night of doing this. And he was just standing at the edge of my driveway staring at me. And I said, hello, what are you doing? And he just stood there and wouldn't budge, didn't say a word. I walked away because I felt like something was about to happen. Literally, as I'm writing this post, he is staring at my house. I live alone and I'm 45 years old. What do I do? Update. October 25th. I would like to update everyone and give them some more info since I'm getting a lot of questions and want to thank everyone in advance. I'm losing a lot of sleep over this, but last night I was actually able to get some sleep, so it's a relief to finally get some answers on what to do next. Hopefully I can clear up a few things. 1. I don't have any pets. I don't have any floodlights or security, but that's about to change. I'm heading over to buy that stuff today. No, I don't have a firearm and don't have the money to get one at this moment. I've asked a few people about this guy and nobody knows anything, so I reached out and tried to get more info. He does have a car in his front yard, but it doesn't look like it's moved in years. I've never seen this guy leave his house unless he comes outside to stare at mine. He looks to be in his early 40s. I've only seen him in the day one time, and that's when he was staring at me out his window. He only seems to come out at night. I work during the day, during the week, so I'm unsure if he's outside during that time. The police said they can't get involved unless he steps on my property, which he hasn't done so far. I will be getting an alarm system installed next paycheck. We'll have an extra bill, but we'll be worth it because I'm generally scared. If you guys only knew the way this guy looks at my house, it has honestly freaked me out, but I don't have the option to move. This is a nice neighborhood and I didn't expect to be scared to death. This is like stuff out of a movie and I'm unsure what to do. I don't know where to go for help. I'm scared to approach him because of the stuff that happened so far. Thanks for your time and hopefully I can find a solution soon. Have you ever met someone, even just as a kid, and you knew? You just knew they would grow up to be a monster. In our neighborhood, that was TJ and Eric. They were the bad kids, pushing kids off their bikes, assaulting girls, stealing stuff. It was bad enough that even at a young age, my dad looked at them and speculated those boys will spend a majority of their adult lives in prison. Not that that is entirely their fault. When they were both young, they were living with their mom and their stepdad. Their stepdad was an abusive drunk, also a cop. One day, while the stepdad was cleaning his gun, he decided to shoot a stray dog instead. He then shot his wife in the head right in front of the boys. So yes, this fucked them up, but don't feel too bad. One of them testified for the defense. Side note, stepdad only served four years for manslaughter. As they got older, the crimes escalated. What started as pushing kids off their bikes escalated to theft, burglary, breaking car windows, stealing cars. They were in and out of juvie and jail. One day, I was standing in my bedroom when I heard a big bang. I looked out my bedroom window and saw a car reversing out of her cul-de-sac. 
After the cops came, we discovered someone had shot a gun on our street. The bullet had shattered the windshield of a minivan in her cul-de-sac. The bullet was embedded in the car seat of a little girl, a playmate of my little sister. She was not in the car seat at the time, but it was kind of jarring for everyone in the neighborhood. And then, along came Sarah Starling. She was 15, while their boyfriend Jason was 19. Jason and TJ were good friends. Sarah was only 15, but she liked to party, and her mother not only encouraged it, but supplied the booze and the weed to her and her friends, including TJ, including Jason. Jason actually moved into her mother's house, much to the chagrin of Sarah's stepfather, Jerry Rose. Teresa Rose, Sarah's mother, was the puppet master in the events that followed. Teresa approached TJ and Jason. She had a proposition. She was sick of Jerry and his complaints. She had her eyes set on his life insurance. TJ and Jason agreed to murder her husband. In return, she would give him $10,000, Jerry's car, and a trip to Hawaii. The first attempt to kill Jerry Rose was in his garage. When he came home from work, he always entered the home through the garage. They were lying in wait for him. On this particular day, Jerry had eaten something that didn't agree with him. He parked in the driveway and ran through the front door to get to the nearest bathroom for relief. TJ and Jason, upon realizing their mistake, freaked out and immediately left, aborted the mission. There was a third guy that was involved, and he was so spooked he dropped out of the whole mission. A few weeks later, Jason, TJ, and Sarah were all at a friend's house. They all left together, as per the friend's testimony. The story gets hazy after this. The facts are, they parked in the Kingsgate Park, in a neighborhood not far from ours. Sarah was put in a chokehold. Sarah was dragged out of the vehicle. She was stabbed through the throat with enough force that the tip of the knife broke off. She was nearly decapitated, less than a half mile away from her house. She was found the next morning by someone walking their dog. Police closed up the area with tape, and soon enough, Teresa Rose and her faithful husband, Jerry, arrived at the scene, begging for news. TJ also arrived, and started asking the officers what was going on. It wasn't long before the police arrested both Jason and TJ. When they were questioned, both threw the other one under the bus. One thing seemed clear from both perspectives. TJ put her in a chokehold until she lost consciousness. Then he dragged her into the woods. Whether or not he stabbed her, if it was him or Jason, only three people know the truth, and one of them is dead. We were all interviewed by the police. We discovered that our neighbor had seen Sarah coming in and out of TJ's house. TJ and Jason both claimed that Sarah was mad at them for their failed attempt to murder her stepfather. She berated them, supposedly, and that was the trigger. I call bullshit, personally. They just wanted to experience the thrill of murder. Maybe they wanted to practice before murdering Jerry Rose. No one really knows. We can all speculate, but my dad knew from the beginning. Those kids are bad news. Update. A girl my sister went to school with ended up being charged as an accomplice. She drove the getaway car for Jason when the shit hit the fan. This all started a couple days ago in my hometown in Alberta, Canada. My mom told me to walk the dog before my dad gets home from work. My dad sometimes gets home late from his job as a police officer. This particular day, he was quite a bit later than usual, but I didn't know that, so I took the dog for a walk at about 8.20. I usually let my dog lead me on the walk. He is getting on a bit, and now knows how far he wants to walk. He pulled me down the path to the river to get a drink. As soon as we got off the paved path to walk the 100 meters to the river, we encountered this woman. I had never seen her before, but I'm not one to judge from the look so we exchange some small talk while the dogs do their own thing. It starts off as a normal conversation, consisting of her saying that she had just moved from the city just down the road. 
Then the conversation went a little different. She asked me what time I got to bed and what time I got up in the morning. I didn't really catch on at that point. I'm a teenager, so I say I go to sleep at about 3 in the morning and get up around 12. She asked, what did I do during that time? I said I like to play video games with the boys. She then asked, where do I live? I gave her a short description and said I was just a few doors down from the path to the river. We said our goodbyes and parted ways. We got down to the river and my dog drank a lot of the water. I was probably standing there for five minutes waiting for him to finish. The whole time I was standing there, I felt uneasy. And when I turned around, that woman I had just spoken to was just staring at me from the paved path. It was fairly open around there. I thought maybe she wasn't looking at me and was looking at something on the other side of the river. I started walking towards the trees, which is just a bit of a walk on the stone beach. When I look back, I notice her head is following me. I get to the path and follow the already trampled down path that's right next to the river. It's fairly a long path that takes about 15 to 20 minutes to walk through. The path path is parallel to the beaten grass and mud path that I had been taking. I keep hearing sudden three in a row footsteps on the path path. Tap, 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 consistently. It was keeping up with me. I still felt uneasy, like I was being watched. But I kept my composure and just kept walking. I got to the split in the path where you can go back to the path or keep going. I chose to go back up as my turn off to get to my house was at the top. I'm walking cautiously up the path because we get a few snakes around this area. I look to my left and see that the three dogs that she was carrying were running through the woods and her crouched down in and among the trees. I at this point felt really uncomfortable and decided to speed walk home and kept checking behind me the whole time to make sure I wasn't followed. Cut to the next day, I again was walking my dog, but today I went in a different way so I didn't encounter that woman again. I started walking for about 5 minutes and I get the feeling I had from yesterday, the feeling of uneasiness. I look around and surely enough I spot that woman. She is standing there talking to her dogs. At this point, I thought nothing bad because I talked to my dog too. I thought it was just a coincidence, so I continued to walk and run into some friends. I talked to them for a bit and keep walking. I was still feeling uneasy. When I had stopped talking to my friends, the woman also stopped. And I guess tried to make it seem like she was looking at someone's house that was for sale. And as soon as I started walking, so did she. It's like she was following me. I thought it may stop if I sped up, but she stayed very close behind me no matter what I did. It was about lunchtime at that point, and as a young teenager, I was very hungry. I walked home to make myself a sandwich, but she followed me all the way home. I locked the doors and got my food. Cut to that evening for dinner. It was a really nice day, so we decided to eat outside on the back deck, which faces the backyard that has a path that no one really uses behind the yard fence. We get onto the deck, and out of the corner of my eyes, I see something moving around on that path. I look over and saw that woman walking her dogs. I thought it was creepy. Then she walked past our house over and over and over again, looking up at me each time until she stopped and stared at me for what felt like a lifetime, but was probably only around 10 seconds. Then she walked off. So today, I still feel really uneasy going anywhere near my deck or yard, but I don't have to walk the dogs today, as my dad did it when he got home. But each time I look out my window, I saw her. She always scurries off before I see too much. So to the crazy woman in my neighborhood that I met down by the river, let's not meet again, ever. I'm a new member to this reddit thing and decided to tell a story about my creepy neighbor that harassed me. So let's get into it. So this all took place 5 days ago on a Tuesday. I'm 16 and very paranoid about my safety, but after this day I don't think I can go outside by myself again without some sort of protection. After online school I took a shower and decided to go outside with my 2 year old nephew. 
So I put on my clothes and shoes and grabbed my nephew's hand and we walked out the door. I live on the bottom floor, so there's three more people, but one of them just had to be my creepy neighbor. He's tall, African-American, skinny, with a beard, and looks to be in his late 30s. While walking down in front of my apartment, I didn't see his truck anywhere, so I had a sigh of relief. A few minutes pass of playing and chasing my nephew when a white Chevrolet pickup pulls up into the complex, stopping yards in front of us and just watching us. I didn't see him drive past us because I was making sure my nephew wasn't running places he wasn't supposed to be and I had also been on FaceTime with one of my best friends. But when I looked up, to my horror, I see him staring back at me, just watching. My body was paralyzed in fear. After snapping back to reality and started to speed walk back to my apartment, in fear I slowly looked back to see if he was still watching me, and just as I thought, he was, but this time he put his truck in reverse and started backing up really slowly while still watching me. That's when I held my nephew as tight as I could and ran fast to my apartment, but before I got the door open, I heard tires screeching like he sped away, but I didn't care to look. I ran in my apartment, locking the door behind me, and I told my mom everything. When I told her what just happened, her face went from concerned to pissed off. That's when she told me not to go out by myself again, from now on. I just wondered what could have happened to me if I was outside by myself. I know that this story was very long, but I just wanted to get this story out there as a reminder that harassment can happen to anyone at any age. So please be safe, and if not already, invest in pepper spray, a taser, or some kind of self-defense weapon. You never know what people are capable of. This is my first post ever, and I was content with just being a silent lurker, but something happened to me the other night, and I figured I can contribute my own story about how I found out my neighbors are terrorists. I'm sure a lot of you know this as it made rounds in the news, but a few days ago, on October 7th, 2020, there was an FBI raid on a trailer in Michigan. This story takes place the night of the raid around 7.30 p.m. When I came home from work around 6.45, I drove into our neighborhood and turned down the street to our house. All seemed normal as I go inside the house to rouse my sleeping boyfriend and prepare to gather our things to go shopping. It takes me a while to wake him up and we chat for a bit about my day. As we go to leave our house to go shopping, we're continuing a conversation we were having as we step out onto our front porch. I noticed that we were much louder than it was outside and noticed that there were people standing at the end of the road. I stopped mid-sentence and it's then I realized how eerily quiet it is aside from my boyfriend who was still talking, unaware that something was off. I quickly tap him on the shoulder and try to draw his attention from locking the door to the people gathering in the street. We both look around and notice police cars at the other end of the street just barely in view. There are two officers speaking to some men besides their large SUV. The SUV was a state car and was parked somewhat sideways so it was blocking the road and had its lights off. I took this as a sign that there was some mild neighborhood scuffle that had occurred and someone called the police. A noteworthy thing but not too uncommon at a mobile home park. We proceed to our car and I commented something irritated that they better move the police car soon as they were blocking the traffic. As we made our way out the driveway, another car turned down the street and headed up the road towards the police car. This gave us the confidence we needed as sheep to follow someone else towards the confrontation. As we slowly crawled up the street in our car, we watched the car in front of us stop and turn out a road that had been left unblocked just in front of the police. We just moved to this area recently and haven't learned the entire ins and outs of every street in the park yet. Unfortunately, the street was a dead end. As we rounded the corner on the dead end street, I caught a glimpse of the police and my irritation immediately melted into confusion and fear when I noticed the large assault rifles they were carrying. 
It dawned on me as we made our way towards the end of the road that whatever the police were doing, they weren't here because of some small neighborhood fight. I felt my anxiety rising as I started rambling about how they had their guns and why they would have such massive guns outside our house. We turned the car around, and as we came back to the police blockade, they saw a motion for us to go back down towards our house. We did, but were still eager to leave the neighborhood, and also hopefully find out what the hell was going on. We passed our neighbor's house and turned down a different road to try to go around. At this time, we thought it was weird that the cop car had no lights on, but there were heavily armed officers standing around it, but we didn't think that there would be any more. We were wrong. As we rounded the street, we were immediately greeted by another police car and two more armed men, this time in full military uniform with lights flashing. I think my jaw dropped to the floor as the men started towards our car. I started freaking out at this point, told my boyfriend to turn around and get the hell out of there. As we turned around, I noticed out the passenger window that there was someone in handcuffs by the side of the house. He was looking right at us and I felt really sick. When we turned around, we finally found a road that led us out of the park and onto the main road. We got our groceries and recounted what just happened on our trip to go grocery shopping. It took me a full hour to finally stop shaking and process. We thought it was crazy, but assumed it was some kind of high profile drug raid. We found out the next day when the news broke that there were multiple people arrested in a plot to kidnap the state governor. The raid was probably about 15 to 30 minutes before we left our house and our dumbasses had no idea. The second time we pulled up to the police blockade, it was right outside the house the raid had taken place at. It really made me stop and reconsider everything that happened that night and how suspicious we probably came across. I now have come to terms with the fact that I live down the street from a domestic terrorist. I've made it a point of figuring out multiple routes through our neighborhood because I realized how dangerous that would be if we were in a more immediate emergency. I didn't even want to think about what would have happened if they weren't stopped and how much crazier the altercation could have been down the street. Sorry if this was kind of long, but I wanted to make sure I explained everything clearly 